Hello everybody, my name is Wilder, and I honestly thought that after all of the marriage candidates for Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town were announced, we weren't really going to get any more info on the game until release. You know, since it's actually coming out pretty soon, March 23rd. But we actually did get more info, a lot of it in fact, so let's jump right into it and see what we got here. First of all, let's take a look at the new character customization screenshots they gave us. So these first ones on screen here are of the actual character customization. You know, changing your skin, eye, and hair color. It's just these four screenshots that are new, but it looks like we'll have a nice bit of customization for our characters, which is awesome. Doesn't seem like there's anything too different here from past games. However, I love that you can have two different colored eyes. That's really cool. It's a nice touch for character design and really lets you customize even more. I'm all for it. I like it. So just like past games, you do customize your character from the start, but you'll also be able to change your appearance after you start the game as well by going to the salon. So if you're someone who likes to change up your character's hairstyle from time to time, you can do that as much as you like here. I know that specifically isn't anything new, but I thought I'd mention it here anyway just in case. But moving on from character to clothing, check these images out. We have a bit of clothing here, nothing too much, but it looks just like the past Story of Seasons games. We'll be able to have headgear, then our main piece of clothing, and then an accessory. I don't know if we'll have multiple accessories. That'd be cool, but it doesn't really look like that's the case. You guys tell me though, how does this look compared to Trio of Towns? The people who have played a lot of Trio of Towns, because I haven't touched that one at all. From these screenshots we already have, what do you think? Anyway, moving on, I want to show off something that I thought was really cool. It's a mechanic that comes with the customization of the farm. One of the new tools we'll have access to is a water bucket, which allows you to get rid of ponds found during the development of your farm, and puddles that can form after rainfall. <laughs> That's cool! So what I'm gathering from this is that we have control over the water now, and where it's going to be on our farm? Mate, That's what it sounds like to me, I mean, maybe. I don't know how much freedom they're letting us have with this mechanic, but I'm really hoping it's kind of like an Animal Crossing New Horizons type situation we got going on here where we're just allowed to go crazy with it, because this is a really big game changer for actual, you know, farm customization in this series. I really hope they give us the freedom I'm thinking of, because I would love to have like a moat around my farm. I think that would be cool. Also, side note, there's a chance of finding treasure by using the bucket to remove the water, so that's a nice little plus, I guess. You think anything good is in there? I mean, probably not. But hey, it's still treasure. I'll take it. Speaking of the farm, though, I never really mentioned this in the past. We've known this for a while. Of course, we'll be able to ride horses again to get around the farm, but that's not all in this game. Two mounts that have been confirmed that we've known about that aren't horses are a wolf. Here's a picture of that. We can ride wolves now, I guess. That's pretty cool. That's crazy. But the second one is a, a motorcycle, a motorbike, which I assume is the bike from the first trailer we saw that the main character was riding into town on. So that's kind of cool. You get to keep the bike. And it's not just for the opening cutscene. But the reason I'm bringing this up now is because the website for the game says that it'll be a bit difficult to walk around the vast ranch, so mounts will help a lot. This statement combined with the new bucket tool and the possibilities that that brings leads me to ask, how big is this farm? You know, I've wondered how big Olive Town itself was in the past, I've asked that question before, but how big is our farm this time around? Like really, I know we get a whole overgrown forest type area, but how big is the customization area that we get to play around with? Because, I mean, the water bucket alone just opened up a bunch of possibilities if they're going as far with it as I think they might. Or, I mean, I hope they might. Might not. I don't know. I have questions, man. I can't wait to get my hands on this game and just see what's what. But let's move on to people, townsfolk, starting with your child. We didn't really get any info. Well, actually, we, we got no info about the kid. But... We did get to see the in-game screenshots of them, and the art for what they'll look like all grown up. Check it out. First things first, I love the vests. I love this vest thing that they're going with. I don't know, the main character and the kids have vests on. They look a lot like the main character, again, a vest aside, they look a lot like your character. Which probably means one thing that really sucks, it looks like your spouse won't have any impact on what your child looks like, again, which I'm usually fine with. You know, it's fine, usually. But this time I'm actually kind of mad about it, because they took away the 2D character portraits. If you take those away, why not replace them with more customization to play around with for other characters? You don't have to draw everything anymore, you can play around a lot more. Listen, removing the 2D character portraits is fine. Do we need them? Absolutely not. They're not required. But when you remove them and don't take advantage of them being gone, it's just 
I don't know, it just, it feels, it feels lazy. If you want to take them away, that's fine, but why not use the fact that they're gone to implement new changes? I don't know, it's just, they could have done a lot of cool things here. <laughs> anyway, there's the kid. Sorry for the mini rant, but there's the kid. Another thing, though, is that it doesn't look like they'll be growing up all the way, like, to a young adult teenager. Type. It's just kind of like they're stuck kids again. Which, like, whatever, I guess. It's been like that for just about the entire series. But I really enjoyed the games like A Wonderful Life, where you got to see your kid grow up all the way to a young adult. You know, or even in A New Beginning, where you got the grow-up candy, which you could get from the Harvest Goddess to give to your kid, it would turn him into a teenager for like 30 days, or whatever. That was cool too, I liked that. You know, I like seeing the kids grow up into teenagers, young adults, it was just because we've been locked to this age for the entire series, so seeing them grow past that is just really fun. Plus it brings on new conversations, new dialogue, which is always a good thing, especially in these games, where dialogue is so important. It doesn't look like it's in here, not a big deal, but it would have been nice as well. Anyway, there's the kids. Let's move on to all the new townspeople that were shown off. There's quite a few here, so let's rapid fire them off, starting with Jacopo. He works on the tourist ship in Olive Town. We have Mikey, a mischievous and gluttonous kid. Here's Beth, who is in Olive Town looking to find antiques. I actually kind of wish she was a marriage candidate because she's really cute. Next is Rash. He loves motorcycles, so him and Damien will probably get along really well. Then we have Simon, one of the pioneers who founded Olive Town. He probably knew our grandfather, so it'll be interesting to talk to him and maybe hear about some stories, I hope. Anyway, here's Jessie. This is Simon's wife. I'm guessing she also knew our grandfather too. I really hope they take advantage of this dialogue. We have Cindy, a little girl who lives in Olive Town. Marco, the best fisherman in town. Then an interesting one, this is Manuela. She's Emilio's mother. So we have another parent of one of the marriage candidates here. I hope there's a lot of dialogue to go along with that. Like again, just like I said with Simon, I hope they take advantage of the situation and the relationships going on here and they play around with the dialogue and put that in there. You know, if you decide to go off and start a relationship with Emilio and maybe even marry him, I hope that his mother actually comments on a lot of that stuff. Anyway, speaking of family, next is Raul, who is staying with Manuela. They're related in some way, but we don't know what yet. I guess we'll have to find out when we play the game. But next is Dosetsu. He's apparently served Iori since Iori was very young. So any of you who are interested in Iori, you also have another character here to talk to as well. Maybe get some more information about Iori from him. He probably knows a lot about him. Then there's Sydney, a lawyer who works in the city. We have Daisuke, the gourmet of this game. His design's interesting. Jean, an esthetician who's working under Karina at the salon. Nigel, the carpenter of the town. Patricia, who owns the animal shop, which means she must also be the mother of both Bridget and Damien. So that's another parent right there for marriage candidates. We've got Gloria, the wife of the mayor and director of the museum. Then there's Jason, he runs a hotel in the city. And last, but certainly not least, we have this child who has no name, and all we know about her is that she wears a mask. Very mysterious, I can't wait to meet her. I wonder if she's going to be in an area of the game where you can go every day to talk to her, or if she's going to be more involved in like the cutscenes in the game. You know, maybe we only see her in the cutscenes for the beginning of the game, and later on, once we actually get to know her a little better, she shows up. Because remember, our farm starts out as an overgrown forest, so maybe she's been living in the forest area. Who knows? We'll have to get to know her. Find out what her name is. Find out where that mask comes from. It's like Skull Kid from Majora's Mask all over again. <laughs> oh no, this game's gonna turn out with the moon falling. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But anyway, there are all the new residents of Olive Town. I hope I'm not missing anyone. We have a nice, interesting set of characters for this game here, which I'm really happy about. We've got a lot of characters, so we have a really interesting set. I think that's partly due to what I was talking about before, with all the relationships and like the families going on here. Really like the 2D art we got for all of them as well. I know it's not going to be in the game as portraits, but I kind of wish it was just because of how good this art is. Let me know what you think about them though, and let me know what you think about everything we talked about here, because that's going to be it for me today. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. All links are down in the description along with the names of my wonderful, amazing patrons. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one.